This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A greeting that comes to you from the Psalms. And this morning we are going to be worshiping with and through the Psalms. And it's good to be with you as we gather here in the sanctuary and gather over live stream for this time of worship together. I'd like to invite you to take a moment to register your attendance if you're here in the sanctuary on the registration pads that are on the rows. And if you're worshiping online, there should be a link you can place in your browser to sign up that way. We are grateful to be able to come together in worship. A few announcements as we gather this morning. Our uh, intergenerational Sunday school class continues through the month of June, and it will take place downstairs in McCorder Hall, and everyone is welcome. It's been a wonderful experience so far, and a big thank you to Maggie, Emily, and Aaron uh, for helping us organize that and uh, offer that opportunity for us. In July, there will be a one-day new member class. If you have been thinking about and praying about joining this church and have yet to be able to attend one of the new member classes, uh, Reverend Shannon Baxter is going to offer a class on Sunday, July 16th at 945 in the Fourth Story Theater. So if you would let him know by email or phone call or write it on a prayer card or through the online check-in that you want to attend that class, he will sign you up and we'll get that journey started. Our nation is celebrating two different holidays in the next couple of days. Today is Father's Day, so happy Father's Day to those who celebrate that day and remember their fathers on this day. Tomorrow, the church offices will be closed in honor and celebration of the Juneteenth holiday, which commemorates the day when the final folks who were enslaved in this nation got word that they had been emancipated. And so it is a joyful day and a day to celebrate. And uh, my Monday meditation will share a little bit more about that holiday, but I hope we find many different ways to celebrate that day in our nation's history. Many of us, your clergy and lay delegates, will be leaving this afternoon to go to Memphis for our annual conference gathering, and we ask for your prayers as we go to that very important gathering of our denomination. We'll be happy to share some updates with you when we return. We began this time of worship with a psalm, and we will be praying with and through the psalms all throughout this service. Our call to worship, our confession, all of the pieces of the liturgy this morning come to us from the psalms. When we, get time, when we get to the time where we read our scripture lesson together, the first Psalm, 130, is one that we will sing together. So it's in your bulletin, the page that you need to turn to in the hymnal, so that we can sing that psalm together. With hearts lifted up in praise in the house of the Lord, let us worship God together.
the Lord, all you nations. For great is his steadfast love towards us. Praise the Lord. Trusting that God's love for us is unconditional and God's mercy is everlasting, let us make our confession with the confidence of the children of God. O oh God, have mercy on us according to your steadfast love. Wash us thoroughly from our iniquity and cleanse us from our sin. You desire truth in our inward being. Therefore, teach us wisdom in our secret hearts. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and put new spirits within us. Restore in us the joy of your salvation and sustain in us willing spirits. And now, O God, we offer you our individual confessions in silence. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is God's steadfast love towards all God's people. And as far as the east is from the west, so far God removes our transgressions from us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. As a forgiven and reconciled people, let's exchange signs of reconciliation and love. And you may do that uh, if you're joining us online in the chat or sending text messages and in the, in the sanctuary in whatever way feels most comfortable with you. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us pray together the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and the word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today.
Psalm 131. O Lord, my heart is not lifted up, my eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me, but I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. My soul is like the weaned child that is with me. O Israel, hope in the Lord from this time on and forevermore. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. who are with us. If you're here in the sanctuary, come on down and join me here. And if you're worshiping from home or on vacation, just move a little bit closer to your screens. And as you're coming down, I want to thank all of you who participated in Vacation Bible School for sharing some of your decorations with us this morning. We wanted all of the grown-ups to see how this place, this sanctuary, had become your home this week, and all of the colorful ways that it was decorated, and especially for Supermere, uh, the Supermere cat, uh, who's watching over us this morning. Come on down. Well, some of you know when you're in worship, we usually start off with singing, right? And we usually sing from this book. This is called a hymnal. And, ooh, it's really new. It's got crispy pages. And it's full of songs. And these are songs that we sing at different times of year, songs about different things that God has done and different ways that we worship God. There's also a song book in the Bible. This is my Bible. And when you get home, if you get a Bible and you open it, try to open it right in the middle you'll probably open to the book of Psalms. It starts with a P, 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 but you pronounce it Psalms. And it's a book of Psalms and of poems and of prayers that God's people have been using, like we use this, for thousands of years to pray and to worship God. One of the things I love about this book of songs and prayers is that it has every possible feeling we might have. There are ways that these songs can help us say to God, I'm angry, or I'm sad, or I'm happy, I'm grateful. All of these different feelings that we feel, because feelings aren't bad, they just help us understand things a little better. These give us ways to express those feelings to God. So next time, if you're feeling sad or mad or happy or grateful or scared, just know that there's a song in the Bible that might help you pray through that and ask your parents to help you find one. Let's pray together now. Gracious God, we thank you so much for these really, really old prayers that have been passed down for thousands of years by your people who love you. We thank you that they help us express our feelings to you. They help us pray and they help us remember that you are always our God and you love us no matter what. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all so much for listening and for the many ways you pray and sing. Three, four, and five-year-olds can go to Children's Church with Pastor Maggie. And the rest of you can go back to your seats and sit with parents and friends. Those of you who've known me for a little while know that in the month of July, I have this family reunion coming up. I talk about it a lot this time of year, and I'll be leaving on July 14th, getting in the car and driving to Brownsville, Tennessee for this family reunion that's a lot more than a family reunion. It's actually a Methodist camp meeting. In 2026, we'll be celebrating our 200th year of gathering as a family. We attend worship twice a day together, and we sing all of the old gospel hymns from that little brown Cokesbury hymnal. That's the hymnal they have in the pews at Tabernacle Church. 
Since I grew up going to camp meeting every year, by the time I was about seven or eight years old, I knew all the songs because we sing the same ones. I didn't need the hymnal anymore. And one of our traditions, as our parents would drive that wood-paneled station wagon down toward Brownsville with my brother and me facing backwards, really safe, uh, we would start singing. We turned off the Bells Highway onto Tabernacle Road just a couple of miles left before we got to the campground. We'd start singing. How great thou art, love, mercy, and grace. One of my favorites. On Jordan's stormy banks I stand and cast a wistful eye to Canaan's fair and happy land where my possessions lie. Anyone know what comes next? I am bound for the promised land. I am bound for the promised land. Oh, who will come and go with? That's what our song leader always did while we were singing it with me. I am bound for the promised land. And it felt like that. It felt like we were bound for the promised land. We were bound for a place that was sacred and holy to us as a family. It was traveling music. Sacred traveling music. This morning we are spending some time in the book of Psalms. As we journey through the Bible together as a congregation, we land in the middle today in this book of 150 songs, prayers, poems that, as I shared with the children, the people of God have been praying and singing for generations, thousands of years. And you could say that this book of 150 psalms is a song book for the journey of life. For whatever it is that we are walking through, there is a psalm that can speak for us and through us in prayer. Whether we are in a place of despair or hope, a place of grief or joy, a place of confession or a place of forgiveness, wherever we may find ourselves on the journey, there is a song for us in this book of Psalms. But lodged in the middle of the book of Psalms, there is actually a book of traveling music. Scholars think that from Psalm 120 to Psalm 134 is a little book of its own. These are the songs of ascent, A-S-C-E-N-T. Songs that pilgrims, Jewish pilgrims, would pray and sing on their way to Jerusalem. It was a practice for those who were able for faithful Jews to make that trip to Jerusalem once a year if they could for Passover or one of the other high holy days. And so Psalm 120 through Psalm 134 would be the prayer book, the songs that they would sing on the way to the temple, on the way to worship God in the high holy place. Psalm 120 begins in a far off land The psalmist longs to be in the presence of God and longs for the temple from a faraway land. And Psalm 134 begins with those who worship God in the holy place at night. And then Psalm 135 is praise the Lord, praise God in God's sanctuary as if all have arrived and all are now praising God together. And so as I read this This little book from Psalm 120 to 134, I imagine all of these faithful Jews from every part of the Mediterranean world, from North Africa and Syria and parts of Europe, and making their way closer to the temple of God and closer to each other, singing the same songs, praying the same prayers. Even this little book of traveling music has within it all the different kinds of emotions and experiences that we go through as humans. What I wanted to hone in on this morning, however, were two of those psalms that are in the Songs of Ascent. And even in these two psalms, 130 and 131, there is a journey. There is a beginning point and an ending point. Now I have to admit, I chose this for selfish reasons. I discovered Psalm 131 
not too long ago, sometime in my adulthood in ministry, it's a short little psalm that I had skipped over, not paid attention to, but it's my favorite. Psalm 131 is my favorite psalm. So I wanted to talk about that one, and then in doing some of my research, commentaries were saying you can't read 131 without 130. You can't get to the end of the journey without starting at the beginning of the journey. So where does Psalm 130 begin? In the depths. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. We can imagine the psalmist in a pit. That's an image that shows up in the Psalms at times. In a place of of darkness and despair that he can't get himself out of. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my cry. We can pray that prayer too, can't we? I'm sure most of us have at some point been in the depths. Whether it's in a place of grief or loss, a place of of pain and illness, physical illness, mental illness, a place of broken relationships, a place where we recognize and see all too well our own failure and our own sin. I think that's where the psalmist may be coming from, for he says, out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, if you, O Lord, could count iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? So perhaps he's in a place of of shame and guilt. Maybe we've been in the depths when we, we get weighed down by all that is not right with our world. All of those places where people are still not free and flourishing, not where God wants the world to be. We know that kind of depth. We know that kind of loss. We know what it is to cry out for God. And then into this psalm there comes a voice. A different voice. Don't know whose voice. I think it's the voice of the Spirit, perhaps, that says to the psalmist, wait. Wait for the Lord. A word of assurance. A word of hope. A reminder that you are not alone. That God is with you even in the depths. And God will lift you out and set you on your feet once again. And so the psalm takes us from the depths to a place of assurance. And then we come to Psalm 131. There's a beautiful image in this psalm. The psalmist begins by saying, My mind is not occupied with things too great and too wonderful for me to understand. But I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child in its mother's arms. Think about that image. A weaned child, a child who is no longer breastfeeding, held by its mother, not searching, not rooting, just resting in peace, filled with with solid foods, and resting without asking or wanting anything. There are some who say this psalm may have been written by a woman because the next line says, my soul is like the weaned child that is with me. And so I imagine a woman, one of the pilgrims, making her way with her family and her neighbors toward the temple, sitting on the steps of the temple just before they go inside, right before they arrive at their final destination, taking a few moments to breathe. And to rest in the assurance that they are all held by God. No more striving. No more going and doing and trying. Just resting in God's presence. What a powerful image this is for us, my friends. We live in a world that is addicted to striving and achieving Always going and doing and proving ourselves and accomplishing and never stopping. A noisy world that continues to tell us with all of its messaging that we are not enough, we're not good enough, we haven't done enough. 
we don't have enough, that we'd, only, we'd be happy if we could only just have this much more, or if we could only have that job, or if we could only be in relationship with that person. This dissatisfaction that's built in to our human nature, perhaps, but certainly to the world around us. And so for us, as the people of God, to hear this psalm where there is no more striving, there is simply trustful rest in the arms of God who is like a mother holding a weaned child. What if this is actually our destination? What if this is actually the, the point of the spiritual journey? We see clues of it throughout the scriptures. God's gift of the Sabbath. There are times to work and there are times to rest. To rest assured that God's got the universe and we don't. We see Jesus in his ministry pulling away to rest. We see him taking a nap with his head on a pillow in a boat that's being rocked by the storms and yet he is trustfully and peacefully centered. What I hear in this psalm is this invitation to ask ourselves, what is our striving all about? What is it really that I'm moving toward? What journey am I on? What is my destination, do I think? Is it really the presence of God? Is it really the kingdom of God? Or is it something else? No matter what it is that we're striving for, I hear the invitation of this psalm to take time to rest, to take time to be grounded and centered in the God who holds us and all of the universe as a mother holds a weaned child. Now, to be sure, as the people of God, we are striving. We are striving for the kingdom of God. We have so much work to do. In a couple of weeks, we're going to be getting to the prophets who give us a vision of this world that God wants us to know and manifest, and there's work to be done. But even as we do that work, may we never lose sight of this, this love, this contentment, this enoughness. I am bound for the promised land. I am bound for the promised land. Oh, who will come and go with me? I am bound for the promised land. Please turn to page 883 in your hymnal as we read the affirmation of faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who is created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, works in us and others, spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, judge and hope, life and death, life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. As we come to our prayer time, I invite you to lift up both your silent and spoken prayers. If you would like to share them with the pastoral team to pray throughout this week, please follow the link under Contact Us on our website. Or if you're here with us in the sanctuary, there are gray cards in the pew racks in front of you 
that you can place in the offering plates as they are passed. Davis Turner and his family are mourning the death of his aunt, Betty Turner Murley, who passed away on June 8th in England. We are praying for their family as they go through this time. The Lord be with you. Pray with me. Lord, we put our hope in you. We strive to see people in the way that you do, delightfully. We strive to be a light to people in the way that you are, confidently. We strive to love people in the way that you do, unconditionally. May we humble ourselves in each space that we find ourselves in, meeting others exactly where they are. O oh God, allow us to enter rooms without judgment and to save a seat at the table for our neighbor. While we live in a world with a lot of darkness, Lord, help us to share your light. Lead us to love when we encounter hate. Lead us to peace when we experience turmoil. Lead us to humility when we are faced with arrogance. Hear our spoken and silent prayers as we cry out for your mercy. We pray today for those who are hurting due to sickness, grief, loneliness, or conflict within relationships. We ask for healing, peace, and comfort to be found within these situations. And we trust that your love is unfailing. We recognize that our lives have been changed because of your redeeming love. Guide us to keep this wonderful gift of love in our minds as we interact with others, in our church, in our homes, in our community, and in our city. Help us to meet others with understanding, acceptance, and love. Lord, we put our hope in you. And we pray this prayer he taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise. Those of you joining us online are invited to give via the options listed on the screen. While we hear it in the sanctuary, we will pass offering plates down the rows. May we give with joy to the God that has been so generous with us.
as we go from this place, may all our longing be for the presence of God. May all our striving be to build the kingdom of God. And in all of our longing and all of our striving, may we remain grounded in the love of God that will never let us go. Amen. Thank you.